It was 9 p.m. I just left a heated community meeting about some redevelopment plan for one of the largest buildings in my neighborhood. That's no way to end a night. So I was on my way to a Lugba Omer bonfire to wind it down. Which, if you're not familiar, probably leaves you wondering what the heck Lugba Omer is anyway. Lugba Omer falls on the 33rd day of the counting of the Omer, the 49-day period between the second day of Pesach and the holiday of Shavuot. Lug itself is a combination of the Hebrew letters that correspond to the number 33. Lamed is 30 and Gimel is 3. For many observant Jews, those first 32 days leading up to Lugba Omer are considered to be days of mourning, excluding, of course, the days that fall during Pesach. Most don't watch movies or listen to instrumental music, have weddings, or even cut their hair or shave, excluding those who need to for professional purposes. But why? Well, according to the Talmud, 24,000 students of the prolific sage Rabbi Akiva were killed off by a plague during the Omer period. Ironically, those very students of the rabbi who is particularly known for his promotion of loving your fellow as you love yourself are said to have died from that plague specifically because they didn't follow that philosophy, or potentially for following it overzealously. The reasons for why we celebrate the 33rd day, though, are twofold. The first is that the plague was said to have ended that day and Rabbi Akiva's students stopped dying off. The second is that one of his most influential students, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, also passed on the 33rd day of the Omer, but not from the plague, and most importantly, only after having revealed his greatest teachings on that same day. In fact, the story goes that while he expounded his teachings, daylight continued well into the night until his task was completed and he passed on. And that is why we light bonfires, to celebrate the light of Torah that he brought into the world both during his life and on his final day. In Israel, hundreds go to celebrate together in the city of Meron, near Tzfat, and to visit Rabbi Bar Yochai's grave. There are giant bonfires, group barbecues, and music that often run through the night, and revelers come together and hold morning prayer services near Rabbi Bar Yochai's grave as the sun begins to rise over the mountain town. Here in Toronto, and in other Jewish communities around the world, we do much the same, minus the all-nighter and early morning prayer services. We get together, enjoy food and music, and as the night comes, the bonfires are lit. As the music plays and the fire burns, the light of Torah is spread with words shared by local rabbis. Sitting by the light of Torah and the warmth of the fire, surrounded by friends, that's something to celebrate, and a wonderful way to end a night.